So I have a mess on my desk. I've been painting birds all morning. Um, it's afternoon now, so I'm just going to tidy up and I want to share some of my birds that I've painted so far uh, for this August challenge. So before I get started, I'm just going to quickly show you the materials that I've been using to paint my birds. Um, so I have pencil and this pencil holder from Maker's Cabinet. I use a Faber-Castell 2B pencil, which these are my favorite. And so I sketch out my birds first. And then I use my Lamy pens to ink with. Uh, so I have two and they have different nib sizes. This one is a fine nib. There we go. This is a fine nib. And this one is a medium nib. And this one is actually my favorite. I just like that I can get bolder lines and I can be light and get a lighter line. Uh, but then I can press and get more of a pronounced line. And I like the dramatic thicks and thins I can get with this medium that I can't get with the fine, but the fine's good for doing things like the eyes um, on the birds, so those I use quite a bit. Um, so after inking the bird, I usually go with my eraser and uh, take off any extra uh, lead that's down. So I have a Tombow, this is a mono knock, I guess it's called. Uh, it's made by Tombow. I just like that this has the fine point and it's like a pencil. And then this one is um, Factus. And I love this eraser. This one just cleans up nicely. So, and it's really inexpensive from the art store that I shop at when I travel at West. So I really like that. Uh, for my paints, I'm using the Etcher palette. So this is the portable Etcher palette. It comes with some ceramic dishes. You get a mixing dish, so I use this. And then you get, um, I counted this before, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 30, 37 wells. It's not printed on the package. You can get two different sizes. I love this one. I have lots of space to put more paints in and I've been looking at uh, filling up some more. So this is what I use when I paint. And it comes with this little uh, paint guide that I've filled out. I use the Etcher sketchbook as well. This is the cold press uh, sketchbook. It's collecting a lot of fuzz from my cat. Anyway, so let's take a look at Avian August. So these are just the first, I think 12 birds that I've done so far. Uh, so, oh, oh, so I forgot to tell you. So I, um, I also use Karen Dash. These are the Neo Color 2, um, water soluble pastels. And these are super creamy and they break really easily. But I love laying these down into damp watercolor because they just add this beautiful pop of color and they're very opaque. So I don't use a lot of them, but I like to put little drops of color in at the end and you can see you can see the vibrancy and the chroma in these uh, and that's pretty much I guess my style so that those are the art supplies I do so these are the birds that I've done so far so first we have the American goldfinch and the goldfinch is my favorite bird yellow is my favorite color uh, I've mentioned that a lot of times so this was the opening bird for the drawing and then uh, second for day two which was August 2nd we did the ruddy quail dove and this one, it's not a bird I'd heard of before, but um, yeah, I tried to find unique poses that you'll see in some of the sketches. Uh, just something to challenge myself so it's not just a typical, I guess this is more typical bird style, but this one I felt that was a little bit different. And the view and stuff. So for day three, we did the horned grab, which I love how this turned out. I don't paint a lot of water and I don't have a lot of um, experience painting water. But I just really like how this turned out. It's, it really, I feel, shows the movement of the water and it doesn't just look like blue thrown down on a page. And then with the shadow, a little bit of the shadow implied in the water too. I was just really proud of how that turned out. I don't, again, I don't paint water normally. So I'm really um, new to this whole uh, idea of painting like that. So I was happy with this one. And then for August 4th was the Ai Iwi, I guess. I've never heard of this bird. I think it's a tropical bird. It's got kind of like a hooked uh, bill and it was eating off of these uh, branches that I saw this picture of and it was hanging upside down. I thought that was really cool. I have never drawn a bird that has been upside down. So I've been challenging myself with this um, Avian August challenge for the month and I thought that would be a really cool. Uh, thing to draw and so it was kind of unique thinking about the bird in the reverse and I didn't turn the page upside down I did not cheat and so I think it turned out okay um, 
Yeah, but I always have trouble painting really colorful birds. I find that if there's a lot of color, it's easy to get distracted by the colors and then it's harder to bring in the form and the shapes. I think I mentioned that on my previous video too where I talked about painting birds. Just, um, yeah, I find them more challenging. So this one turned out okay. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, but these are birds I've never heard of. So I'm really enjoying the challenge just for what I'm learning uh, from the birds too. This next one is probably one of my favorites that I've done so far. This is the Adelie Penguin. And so if you look up this penguin online um, in Google Images or something and see pictures of the Adelie Penguin, it looks like Pingu. So if you know Pingu, the little plasticine character, um, he has like these big round eyes and all the Adelie Penguins look like little memes. They're so funny. All the pictures are really cute. And so it was hard to pick uh, picture. I just thought that this guy looked really cute and he was like strutting along. So uh, that's the one I chose for August 5th. And then the next one for August 6th, day 6, uh, was the Azure Tit. And I've never seen this bird either. This is a really pretty bird though. It's very dainty looking and it's got these soft blues. Uh, it looked so pretty. And I thought this pose again was unique. It had the wings outstretched and so it almost has like a dove kind of look to it. Uh, in this form, but it uh, kind of looks like a budgie too with the markings around the eyes. Uh, I thought this one was really pretty and fun. So uh, for the spread, I was really happy with the way this whole composition came out on this page. So I was really pleased that everything kind of fit and was um, evenly spaced. Things get a little rougher <laughs> as we go along, you'll see. Um, but I was really pr proud of this uh, layout. I thought that this turned out really good um, and everything took up a good amount of space in the page but didn't feel crowded and so I really was um, happy with this composition. This one's a little bit different. Oh gosh this guy. This guy's funny. So this is a rosate spoonbill. So spoonbills are characteristic with these big wide bills that they use for scooping deep in the water um, to get their food. And so this one was just standing up. It is a picture that I used as a reference I found on Google Images. And I've never seen a bird look like this. And so it looks cartoony and it looks kind of fake. But um, again, like I was going for the really unique poses. Birds, like non-typical bird poses. So this guy was just hilarious. And I really enjoyed painting the pinks and adding the bursts of color throughout where... And they might have been darker or more intricate or maybe the light was hitting it differently. Um, and I don't honestly have a lot of pinks on my palette. I have like this opera pink from Holbein and I have this um, quinacridone pink. I believe this is from Core. Most of my paints are Core. I have Potter's pink, but I didn't really use that too much. Uh, and this quinacridone violet I used as well. But then I brought in some colors like these oranges here. Like it's a transparent pyrrole orange and... I don't recall what that one is, but it, again, they're all core colors. So bringing in these pops of colors uh, really helped with the pink. And then I also brought in like this Neo color, which you can't really tell that that's in there unless you look for it, but you can see it's in some of the shadows. And I do have a couple pinks. I have this pink that's a Neo color. And just looking at, I think I added this one as well. Uh, this one is just purple as the Neo color. So I had a lot of fun just adding all those pink colors in and he is really flamingo-y looking so just getting that kind of look and feel down was fun and doing the creek too. And I, I don't know this pose is just funny. It's <laughs> You do not see birds like that and I think I'm kind of glad you don't because I'd be terrified. <laughs> he seemed kind of big but he was interesting. Uh, the next one which was August 8th my birthday so that day was the Lahore Pigeon and so this one, hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't, I, these birds are all new to me. Um, but yeah, this one was very muted and had very soft pinkish tan tones. And so I tried to add some interest where I could, just kind of dropping in those um, bursts of color and emphasizing anywhere I did see a highlight that maybe was a little bit warmer with the yellow. Um, but overall, he's a pretty neutral looking bird. Um, but again, I was happy with the way this one turned out too. And getting the the reading of the tan, I guess. Uh, it's a little less evident in this one, I think. But yeah, it was really fun. And then for the ninth, we have the wood duck. Again, that's a bird with these crazy, tremendous colors that are so pretty. And uh, 
this little guy was standing on the roof being kind of quirky and so I thought he would be a good one to paint and just getting all the different colors. The purple, I think the purple was the most challenging in the neck area where it's like a pinkish purple because I don't really have that color in my palette either. I have like this, this bluish purple. So mixing some of these together uh, helped bring that color there into the bird and make it more like the color that I saw uh, in the reference photo. And then again, he has all these emerald greens. The wood duck is so pretty and it almost has like an iridescent look to it, um, which I didn't capture here with any iridescent paint, but uh, I tried to do it just with the jewel tones. So this one I really enjoyed. This was August 10th, uh, day 10 of Avian August. So the chestnut sided warbler, again, this is a new bird to me. He has this brown streak along his body and then he has just this kind of variegated um, neutral tone throughout and he's more white than anything. I really tried to emphasize some of the colors that I saw and really bring some pops. He's got some yellow uh, in him as well in the actual bird so I wanted to keep that pretty pure. And he's standing on sort of a pine tree at the top of the centerpiece and then all these little pine needles are around him. So again I thought the pose was really uh, unique and I like the way he had his beak open. It's kind of like he was singing or something. Um, yeah, so I thought he turned out pretty good. And then this one is the Red Crested Turaco for day 11. And so I drew this guy. This guy gave me um, some trouble. I drew him three times. At first I drew him too close to the pine needles and I didn't have room for his tail. And then I drew him more to this side, but then he ended up being really, really big. And in the composition, he seemed too big. So I erased it again, which I normally never erase. I just go with what I do. I don't ever change things, but I changed this guy three times. So the third time he turned out perfect, I guess, or better than the other two. Uh, so I kept him. And this is the first time I've actually painted something on the crease of my notebook or sketchbook. And I always like try to keep just to the pages and it's um, I don't know, I'm very rigid like that, so to do it this way, I thought, you know, it was very brave of me. This is another, like, first, um, for me. And so I thought it turned out pretty good. I was really impressed that when I put down the watercolor, the, the string that's in the book wasn't coated where it didn't take on the color it actually did, so it blended more in with the art, so it just makes this crease a little less obvious I guess. You obviously know it's there but uh, it just doesn't, it, it's not that stark. Uh, if you were, if this was a wax based string or something then it would repel that watercolor and it would have like these big white um, I guess uh, strings down the middle and it would just look really obvious and and stand out I guess. Uh, so I was really impressed that the fibers took on the colors and so it just kind of it it blended it better so you don't that's not the first thing you notice when you look at the bird you're looking at the bird first uh, if I were to make prints of this I could easily clean this up in Photoshop and make that line disappear with cleaning up the shading of the spine and and those seams so I knew that I wouldn't be totally stuck by doing this uh, but breaking the frame and usually when I have a book like this I never just make one whole page it's always this page and then this page and so doing this was a big deal so I'm actually happy with how he turned out he did um, push his tail into the pine needles a little bit but because his tail was blue uh, I was able to cover up the green that was underneath and so you don't really notice that one bird was painted before the other this one actually looks like he's over top and and he's supposed to be so that turned out pretty good. I also put some uh, interference blue from Daniel Smith on his wings because he's very iridescent too, kind of like a peacock. It is a bit hard to see. The light will just catch it a certain way. You can kind of see that there's lines on the wings here, uh, a little bit in the tail feathers. It is really hard to see, but the light, yeah, you can see it a bit there in the blue here. The light just picks it up a certain way and it just adds that little sparkle, uh, which is really nice. And so the other bird, the day 12 bird, is the American Robin. Uh, going into this, I was a little nervous because I painted a Robin back when I was learning how to watercolor, and it actually turned out pretty good for my skill level at that time. And it 
looked like a robin and so when I was painting this little guy I felt that he didn't look as much like a robin as my robin from like three years ago looked. I'll pop a picture on the screen uh, for my Instagram but now that he's done I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit easier on myself and I think he looks pretty good uh, so I'm happy with the way he turned out and yeah I've finished him today so now it's August 13th I gotta do the day 13 bird um, which again is a bird I've not heard of, but that's the one I'm going to work on next. I'll show you this spread, how this looks. So this one again, like I mentioned, the other spread turned out really good, the composition of it. And this one, I feel like it's, there's a lot of white space and like this one fills up the frame pretty good, but maybe the, the shape of this one, if it was more vertical or kind of in this space more, uh, would look maybe in this space would look a little bit better, but, um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where there's not really room to fit another bird properly without squishing him in, but it's like there's too much space. So this composition isn't my favorite. I do really, really like this one the best. That's my favorite. And then we've got this guy here. I hate, I really hate the way that these are very sparse. After making this guy really big and I could have broke the frame here and maybe brought this pigeon in, maybe made this wood duck bigger. Uh, but it's easy for me to see that after the fact because what if with what I do for my daily my day job uh, as a graphic designer I can make these tweaks and and resize things where I can't do them after they're painted so yeah I guess it's just a habit I guess but that's a look at my first 12 birds so I'm going to continue with this challenge and do the rest of the month if you want to follow along you can follow me on Instagram and I post all my birds there as I paint them I've just been catching up today. I did uh, this bird and this bird and then today's the 13th as I mentioned. So that's a look at my birds. If you want to follow along, you can follow on my Instagram. Follow me there. I post all the birds as I paint them. I'm going to continue on with the rest of the month and then I'll post a summary video as well when I've got them all painted all 31. So I thought it'd just be fun to share a quick look at where I'm at right now and how the birds are going. If you have a favorite, let me know in the comments below. I'd Love to know what catches your eye and which ones you really like the best. Uh, I think for me, I, I have favorites for different reasons. Um, actually, I really like these two. I like this page. The birds on this page, I really like. And this penguin, the Adelie penguin, I really like as well. So anyways, that's a look at my birds. I hope you enjoyed this quick uh, mini sketchbook tour or look at my avian August challenge so far. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up to the video and subscribe so you're notified the next time I post to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.